I thought it was 2022 for some reason. I mean, time does fly, but not that fast. Hello friends, this is Miro and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to do a couple of plant chores with you, as we established last month that plant chores are a thing, as are the cars that are passing by constantly, always, all the time, whether it be day or whether it be night. And that could be a poem, basically Shakespeare. Anyways, I do apologize for the background noise if you can hear it, you probably can. It's just, it's a main street. Today I wanted to talk about my Hoya Pachiclara and how you can attempt to remove Hoya from coconut husk. I received this Hoya, I think it was on the 28th of January and I recorded the video 29th, the video that was on the 31st of January on my channel about the plant haul. You saw in that video that the Hoya looks good, but I did voice my concern that something could go wrong because it was in a coconut husk and that doesn't work in my environment. Well, it turns out there, is, there are more problems with this Hoya and I actually discovered that Hoya Pachicladas are being sold in the EU and basically as soon as they arrived, they were discounted. So. There might be something wrong with this batch. Just saying, it was pointed out to me that they look, it looks exactly like mine, like the pot, the, the hanging pot is the same. It usually means it's coming from the same place. The reason why I do remove coconut husk is because it doesn't work in my conditions. I mentioned this in my previous videos. It's very difficult to water. I need a lot of water. It's kind of hot in the room. Not hot, but it's quite warm in the room. There is no sure way that you can do it. So it's kind of like, you just have to try it. There are no steps that will help you out. You gotta soak it, try to remove it, soak it, try to remove it. That is the all knowledge. A lot of patience, a lot of soaking, a lot of water. Is it possible to lose a lot of the roots? Yes. You can attempt to save as many roots as possible and the only thing to help you with this is really your patience and how willing the coconut husk is to remove. So water will help you with this. A lot of people just take Hoya that arrived in coconut husk and they just put it in a slightly larger pot with a new mix around it. This is not the method that I prefer or that I practice or endorse. And the reason for that is you will have Hoya in coconut husk. And if you put around your mix, let's say your mix is coconut peat, a lot of perlite, some bark, the outer layer will hold on to more moisture than the inner layer. And the issue with coconut husk is that it's not really wicking, so it will not be able to wick the moisture from the outer layer. All the roots on the outside of the coconut husk to me look dead. On this Hoya, they look very dead. I will show you how they look like. So this could work if the roots were still alive and active, but it's still not the best because the center will be constantly dry. Really, when you water coconut husk, it will stay moist very briefly, but the purpose of the coconut musk is actually this. As I previously mentioned, coconut musk... It, musk? Elon Musk. <laughs> Ugh. Coconut husk is ideal for growers in Southeast Asia because first of all, it is readily available, it is not expensive, and most importantly, it will prevent root rot. There is a lot of humidity and a lot of rain there, almost every day rain, if not every day. Even the dry season in Southeast Asia is quite wet, as we said before, there will be frequent rain, not as much as in, like in the rainy season where you can have rain every day, but quite frequently it will rain. So the choice of coconut husk for them is very clear and it will work in their conditions. They will be able to hydrate the plant every day or the rain will hydrate the plant every day. And by the end of the day, it will dry out. It's perfectly fine. In your home, this will kinda not work. It can work if you have a lower temperature, so if it's not very hot and maybe with lower temperature, your humidity is higher, so you can get away with watering once a week. Again, it depends, and it depends if the Hoya will grow in those temperatures, but we all have to look at the growing season. So what will your temperatures be in summer? If you're living in Europe, most likely 30 degrees of Celsius. So that will mean you will probably have to water every day, every other day, if you leave it in the coconut husk. And if you have a moderate humidity. Now I'm not into watering every day. I love my Hoyas, but watering every day is not something that I'm into. So I choose to remove coconut husk. If you only put bark 
around the coconut husk thinking, okay, this will be the same kind of, but again, what will retain the moisture there? Bark is not very moisture retentive. And then we also have to wonder what is the acidity between those two? So what, will the pH of bark influence coconut? And there's just, it's just too complicated. There's so many things to think about, so many things that could go wrong. So I really choose to just remove the coconut husk. I'm not afraid of cutting my Hoyas. I'm not afraid of rooting them again. I have a very high success rate of rooting Hoyas if they come viable enough to be rooted. So if they arrive dead, of course, I'm not a wizard. I'm not Gandalf. I can't resurrect them. Today is the 9th of February. So this Hoya arrived to me like 10 days ago. Can't really count, 11 days ago. So not even two weeks ago and it already lost one leaf and I'm not loving that it is yellowing and it seems to be not getting better, that's for sure. Leaves are losing succulency. Even though this was watered already twice, I can see that this plant is definitely not taking up enough water. So I'm gonna intervene. It's time. We don't need to wait longer. We don't need to wait for this one to completely fail. We can try and save it now. I do assume most of these roots are dead. So we will try to fix that. I will attempt to remove it from the coconut husk. I don't know if that will be possible. And you can see this leaf is all also losing its color. This one has a bit of yellowing as well. I'm not sure if that will show up on the camera without me breaking it. It has a bit of yellowing. It kind of looks like it was possibly shaded by the leaf, by the other leaves and then that the part that was shaded is slightly lighter in color. That's what it looks like to me. The brown spotting doesn't concern me. What concerns me is the circular spotting around it, the circular discoloration. It's like a concentric, it's not a circle, but it's a concentric shape, kind of if you were to offset those two spots. I do think we need to take care of this right now. I will take this to the kitchen sink because we have a flow of water there, constant flow of water, which will be very appreciated. Again, I will attempt to remove it. I don't know the outcome. If I'm not very successful, I will cut this and I will root it again. We will see how much we can do without damaging too many roots. We do need to inspect if these roots are alive. So far, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Just going to be honest with you, it doesn't look very good. You know, th these things happen. You receive a plant, they receive it in the garden center and they quickly want to get rid of it. You buy it, you think, oh, it's great, it looks good. But this plant has been through some major stress and it is normal that some things will happen that may require your intervention, your, I'm not gonna say divine, your plant vine. Inter plant vine sounds like it could be a platform. Intervention, this needs intervention. So without further ado, let's go to the kitchen sink. This is our Hoya Pachiclada, a little bit closer. So now you can see those spots that I was telling you about. That is kind of worrying me, the concentric stuff around it. There is discoloration on several of the leaves, especially on this one, you can see, now it's very visible. This part here is worrying me and the underside doesn't look the best. So we will just remove it from here and take a look at the roots of the plant. I don't think it's actually necessary to remove this. I'm pretty sure it will just slide out, but yeah, let's try. Yep. So this Hoya was watered a couple of days ago and you can see it is already bone dry. The good thing is I don't see any root mealybugs. The bad thing is these roots are completely dry. This is a dry root. There's, it's not, it's not alive anymore. This is what happens when you let the roots get dry. And I don't think there, there is anything inside that is alive. Yeah, these are just falling apart as you touch them. There's a spider. Is there a spider? Yes, there is a spider there. Okay, so we will take this so you can see now a bit better. It doesn't look good. And there is some moldy stuff growing. And that's all of it is excellent. I'm loving the situation. 
What we will do is we will take this to the kitchen sink and try to hydrate this so because th that could potentially help us remove it. Okay, so the shot is not the best. We get it. You should be very grateful if my camera doesn't fall into the kitchen sink because like the tripod ends here. So let's hope you don't end up in the sink with the Hoya. I have a bowl of water here. I'm gonna soak it a bit. Oh, I put the tripod on the Hoya. That's nice. The water is not really hot. It's just slightly warm and it will help us hydrate this coconut husk. As I said before, there is no really one way to remove it. It's not a science. It's kind of like trial and error and seeing what works best and sometimes what really works well with coconut husk is letting it soak for a while. See, this part is already kind of coming off and I can see a root here so I'm trying gently to remove it and maybe because you know this bark is coming off or this coconut husk is coming off in these small strains I guess we can try to carefully peel those off. It's really about soaking and peeling, and you know, sometimes you can see you will have parts that will come off with roots. We will see by the end of the process if we will have any roots left that are not aerial roots. I really don't like that the roots grow into the wall of this, and it gets moldy also in there. I really hope that that's mold, that they're not root mealybugs. It does look extremely suspicious and I'm not loving it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Well, it will not focus, but that definitely looks like a root mealybug to me. On a scale of one to 10, I'm loving this zero. That's how much I'm loving this. I'm gonna try to remove a bit more and I'm gonna inspect these parts, see? That's a bit odd. I hope you don't see my giant face now on the camera. If you do, I'm very sorry. Oh, I'm not loving this. See, this is, this is just not good. None of this is good. At this point, I do start sounding like Darth Vader and while there may be Star Wars fans out there, I think a voiceover is better suited for this segment. You can see as I continue to open this coconut husk and as I closely inspect the root ball, there is white powdery substance everywhere. And this is probably the leftovers of the egg sacs and this is a, a better indicator that there are, or that there were root mealybugs there. There are still probably eggs of root mealybugs. And at this point, this no longer looks like mold because there is just too much of it. It is distributed everywhere and it's distributed around the roots. And if we take a closer look here, you can actually see something that looks closer to the adult root mealybug with fluffy powdery stuff around it. So not a pretty sight and not something that you really want to keep on your Hoya, especially because it is quite easy to transfer to other plants because root mealybugs are quite mobile. And in case that you do share water when you water your plants, which is something that I do not recommend, it will be very easy for these root mealybugs to spread across your plant collection. So to me, this definitely looks like a root mealybug. And at this point, I don't even want to rescue the roots. Root mealybugs are notoriously difficult to get rid of. I heard people soaking in. Let's just check. Yep. So basically, the stem is good. Whether this be mold or root mealybugs, None of those two are good. So let's try to just get as much of this off as possible. Sorry. So at this point, I'm actually not even going to care about the roots at all because this is going to be rooted again. 
this which was viable. The big ones are seem to be viable, but no matter what, sorry, you can't see this. No matter where I look, I can see suspicious things inside that I'm not loving. And I already, see, this is not something. Nope. Done with that. You know, it's hard from the outside, but you can see it does actually hold on to some water, but you need a long time. So if you water it normally without soaking, I think if you soak this, that this could hold on to some water. I'm going to clean this up and we will be back here. This is all that, that is left of roots. I typically wouldn't remove the, the leaf that is yellowing, but this one is just... I don't want to risk anything, so I'm going to move it. Now I'm thinking about cutting this plant here because the root mealybugs should stay below the soil line, but uh, I don't think I'm going to cut it. I'm going to do something else for the time being. If they continue to, to appear, then I'm going to take a cutting. So they shouldn't really go any higher than the so soil line. This is my first line of the fence. I'm soaking my Hoya in hot water and I will check the temperature of the water with my TDS meter because it does measure the temperature of the liquid. They say to efficiently get rid of the root mealybugs, you need to soak the root ball in water that is anywhere from 46 to 49 degrees of Celsius. Anything lower than 46 degrees of Celsius may not kill all the eggs and anything higher than 49 may damage the roots. Temperature of my water never went above 41 degrees of Celsius, so this isn't very useful because it's coming straight from the tap and it's quite hard to maintain the temperature. I'm gonna clean each leaf with dishwashing liquid, hoping I don't break them. At this point, I'm not terribly concerned about the peduncle. I'm actually concerned about the plant staying alive, so if I do lose a peduncle, I will not really care. I will not be upset. However, I will be upset if I lose the plant. After letting the dishwashing liquid stay on the leaves for some time, I decided to rinse them off so we could move on to the next step and to get anything that's on the leaves off them. I'm going to remove any roots that are damaged, like this one. So this wasn't the plan, but sometimes this is what it is. I have successfully fought off mealybugs, root mealybugs, on my Hoya Obscura, but I did cut that and just rerooted it. I did try to fight them on my violets. I did have some root mealybugs on my violets. In the end, I had to toss them. It wouldn't work. Nothing worked. Peduncle is still there. If this peduncle magically survives, I will be shook. I'm gonna take hydrogen peroxide and spray it, and this is going to be the last step. I have 3% hydrogen peroxide. On my Hoya Obscura, I was successful only because I decided to cut it and basically start over the plant. So it does seem that root mealybugs are not to be messed around with. Take them seriously. This isn't something you can ignore. And the sign, you know, the... The sign is that the plant keeps looking dehydrated. Let's just spray this. Now I'm just going to make sure that I get full coverage with hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so we treated it with hydrogen peroxide and this should in theory help with fungal stuff as well. So this is the fully treated Hoya. Well, that didn't turn out that well, did it? Yes, it is a different day and I'm wearing the same shirt. It's called continuity. Let's get back to our Hoya Pachiclata. As you saw in the previous footage, not everything turned out great. We had some unexpected visitors, something that we didn't order, but we got as a bonus. I can't say that I'm thrilled about it, but there is nothing really that I can do. Root mealybugs are quite notorious to get rid of. And if you search for advice on how to get rid of mealybugs, Usually they tell you to take a cutting and just get rid of the rest of the plant or get rid of the plant altogether. Now, because this is quite a big cutting of Hoya Pachiclara, I don't think that all hope is lost. And I did have Hoya, a much smaller Hoya Sunrise that is doing 
really well now that also arrived, oddly enough, from the same place with root mealybugs. Currently, Hoya Pachiclata is in this glass jar with some distilled water and organic, and I'm just trying to see if we can get these roots to grow. We did lose another leaf, and maybe we will lose this one too on the bottom. I'm not gonna pull it out, but it does seem to me like there is some fungal spotting, and... Oh, please tell me that's not a mealybug, is it? Nope, it's not a mealybug, but looks like me, we might lose that leaf too. It's generally not recommended to root a cutting of this size. It's a quite a big cutting, so it will lose some moisture. The peduncle is still alive and it is growing. I will try to add a bit more water and maybe remove that suspicious leaf. I'm not sure, maybe some fungicide, maybe hydrogen wasn't enough. We will see if I will do that in the next couple of days. I'm closely monitoring this Hoya and I will put it aside now. There are very few ways in which you can get rid of root mealybugs. One of the ways is, as I said, to cut the plant, take a cutting, root the cutting, throw away the mother plant. Root mealybugs are supposed to stay below the soil or the potting mix level. They will always be around the root zone. They shouldn't really spread to the rest of your plant. The thing with root mealybugs is, even if you don't see the adult ones, there might still be eggs. That's why we get rid of the potting mix. You're supposed to completely get rid of the potting mix, as much of it as you can, in case you have root mealybugs. Now there are ways to treat them and they do recommend one of the ways is to soak the root ball in 46 to 49 degrees Celsius water. I didn't go that high, I really couldn't, and it's quite difficult to maintain a constant temperature in your room in, or in your home environment. Sure, you can add a bit of hot water every now and then, but it's, it will be difficult to maintain that level of 46 to 49. The priority here is not only to remove the adult ones, but also to kill off all the eggs that remain. So that temperature, that high of a temperature is supposed to kill them. Now, in my opinion, this is quite a complicated process. And if I see that this doesn't recover, that maybe, maybe this will not even root, I will simply take the top cutting and try to rescue that. would really like to see it flower, which may not be smart because it doesn't have a root system or not a very healthy one, so it might unnecessarily exhaust the plant. Hoyas are not really like orchids. They will not push the peduncle unless they have the energy because, you know, sometimes orchids will push the flower spike even though the orchid is not in good health. In Hoyas, you know, even when the conditions are favorable, they can blast the flowers. So I'm kind of relying on that, that if it really cannot make it, that it will blast this peduncle. Aside from rooting the plant again or washing the roots in very hot water, there is the option to use systemic insect Insecticide. They do say that systemic insecticide is supposed to help. I don't like to use insecticides, systemic insecticides, and I really hope that all the action that I performed will be enough to get rid of the root mealybugs. If not, if they continue to appear or if the plant is not in good health, I can just take a cutting and then I think we will be fine. I think there is still a high chance to save this Hoya. Now, this brings me to another point. This is exactly why I always repot plants when I first get them. You don't really know what's happening inside the root ball. Sure, you can inspect the roots and you can see the outside of the root ball. And it did look a bit fishy to me, but I really didn't know there are root mealybugs and certainly not to that extent. It wasn't really visible on the outside of that coconut husk. Had it been potting mix, maybe coconut peat with perlite, maybe then it will be, would be easier to see. But then again, if you have perlite in there, it is also a bit difficult to, to see root mealybugs because they are also white. I know that a lot of people say that you're really not supposed to repot a plant as soon as you get it because of the additional shock and stress that you're putting on the plant. But I really tend to disagree. I never really lost a plant due to repotting. However, I did lose it because it didn't repot. And this Hoya Pachiclara is one of the examples. It stayed in the same potting mix or in the same coconut husk maybe 10 or 12 days after I received it. And it didn't really look good. The leaves started to yellow. And that's one of the signs actually that you have root mealybugs. If the leaves start to yellow and drop and the plant looks dehydrated despite you giving it the water. 
Now, this can be symptom of many things. Yellowing leaves, dehydrated plant can be also a sign of under or over watering. Or actually, maybe we can just say it's a sign that the roots are dead and plant is not taking up the water. So it's good to know that. It's good to find out these things as soon as you can because if I left it to adjust to my home for two or three months, the plant would probably die by then. It would lose all the leaves because they really rapidly started to yellow. Now, I don't know when this infestation started. It certainly didn't start with me here. And uh, my friend who also got this Hoya, she also has root mealybugs on her Hoya pachiclata. Now, in her case, it is a milder infestation, but you know, if you let things sit there, it will just progress. Another concern when you have plant with root mealybugs is introducing it to the rest of your plant collection. Yes, I do know that we are supposed to isolate the plant when we get it for a couple of months, but many of us don't really have conditions to isolate a plant. I don't have the room nor the light to isolate a new plant, so I just make sure to inspect it carefully and then I can introduce it to the rest of my collection. Sometimes I will shower it or spray it with paraffin oil or wash with dishwashing liquid. In this case, even if I were to inspect it more carefully than I did, I still wouldn't notice the root mealybugs because they were deep in that coconut husk. However, I do think that if I did let this go on for more than a week, root mealybugs would spread to the rest of my hoys because they are in a small space and they would be able to get to the other ones, especially if they shared water. Now, I know this video is perhaps a bit of a letdown in terms of removing the coconut husk. I can only say you need to be much gentler than I was, but really when you see that you have root mealybugs, there's no point trying to save the root. The eggs are there, the mealybugs are there. Even if you get rid of the potting mix, there are probably eggs that you don't see and that will come back. Washing down the roots will not get them off. As I said, a really hot water could help you out or just deciding to root the plant again. I do hope that the video was helpful so you could recognize how root mealybugs look like. I do encourage you to inspect your pots. Root mealybugs are a bit of an insidious thing because you don't really see them and some of the signs that your plant shows are also similar to signs that your plant would show if you under or over watered it. In any case, from my African violet experience, I did learn that they are not a thing to be messed around with because you can lose a lot of plants quite quickly because of course, when you realize you have root mealybug infestation, it's probably already too late. And simply some plants might not be even able to take the treatment like African violets, they're quite sensitive plant. Hoyas luckily are hardier so I think in this case we will have luck. Of course, I will keep you updated and you will find out how this hoy doesn't. If it blooms, which at this point I will consider a huge jackpot, uh, I will let you know. All right, that is all for this video. <laughs> no more surprises. I did want to repot this, not this, this philodendron Xenadu, but I think we will have to leave that for some other time. I do have, actually it's not a philodendron, it's stomatophyllum, and we have this stomatophyllum Sprucianum here. I had this plant for a couple of years now, so it's just like, it doesn't have space to fit in its old spot, so it will be here for the rest of the spring, I think. I, I don't even know why I'm still talking. Why I'm still, why am I still talking? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you hate root mealybugs, give it also a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It means, of course, a lot to me, and turn on the notification bell if you're not annoyed with notifications. I also have a Patreon page, and the link to that is in the description below. I would also like to hear if you have any experience dealing with root mealybugs. Were they difficult to get rid of? What did you do? What steps did you take? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye! I have no idea what's wrong with me. <laughs> I really don't. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big, big shout out to my $5 patrons, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Kathy L, Kelsey Jager, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Vicky Dingler, Therese Gottman, Zlokov Nipponi, and one anonymous patron. I would also like to give a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Liz Martinez, and a home, Ivana Nikki, and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Frihit Yanask and Hasinta. Thank you all so much for your support. I can't tell you how incredibly much it means to me when I go 
to my Patreon page and I think how many of you support me and I hope that you're loving the videos and I hope that they give you some laughs as well. See you soon! My brain stopped working. <laughs>